The Utah Transit Authority is spending some big bucks on D.C. lobbyists, which happen to be among the top for transit agencies in the nation. Well, that's actually helped pave the way for UTA's aggressive $2 billion push to build 70 miles of new rail in seven years. But now that we have it, can the agency actually afford to maintain it? New tonight, KSL political specialist John Daly and the Deseret News looked into UTA and the impact of lobbying. Well, Mike, we could find no other local government entities spending more on lobbying in Washington, D.C. than UTA. That investment has paid off, bringing Utah a lot of federal dollars to help expand its rail system. The question now, where will UTA get the money to run it? Once just a local bus company, UTA is now a multifaceted transportation agency with expanding rail lines, even its own multi-million dollar development projects, a system considered as good as any other for a city Salt Lake size. To gain that status, the Utah Transit Authority spent more than $3.5 million over the last five years on high-priced lobbyists at every level of government. In fact, we found UTA spending on federal lobbying tops all transit agencies in the nation except one in Washington state. Of that total, UTA spent nearly $2 million in Washington, D.C. on a pair of executive and legislative branch lobbyists. Opinions are mixed on whether that's a good deal for taxpayers. But when they deal with the bureaucracy back there, sometimes having some help is an, is an asset to them. It always bothered me, John, when I would see an organization lobbying Congress and then find out that we were paying them to lobby us. I said, he got to me, what are we doing that for? UTA's Washington lobbyists declined a request for an interview and referred questions to UTA. An agency spokesman tells us those lobbyists are key to gathering and sharing information and helping UTA win competitive grants. If you go back to 2006, we've brought more than a billion dollars of federal discretionary money to Utah. Um, that's really a result of our efforts in Washington. In the past five years, it's hauled in money for operating costs and system expansion, more dollars per capita than any metropolitan transit agency in the country, says UTA. <laughs> Funds that help build Frontrunner between Salt Lake and Ogden and the new Mid-Jordan light rail line, creating nearly 6,000 jobs for construction, operations, and maintenance workers, as well as subcontractors and vendors. I think the cream does rise to the top. And I think UTA's projects in the past have had a reputation for being on time, under budget. Ridership has exceeded expectations. That's why I think they've been successful in terms of securing federal grant money. Lobbying dollars are sometimes the best bang for the buck of any dollars a company or an organization spends because there was a lot of federal dollars going out. Uh, if you could get a nice earmark, you know, what's 200000 in lobbying fees for a 10 million, 20 million dollar, even 2 million dollar uh, earmark. Now that we've got this impressive transportation system, can UTA afford to operate it? The agency says yes, but thanks in part to the recession, UTA is facing growing stress on its budget. Ridership for tracks and front runner is about 66,000 weekly boardings above UTA's projections. But a recent legislative audit questioned whether UTA has the money to maintain its vastly expanded system and suggested projected revenues and expenses may not be realistic. Local sales taxes pay for most of the capital and financing costs for UTA's rail lines. But in 2010, those revenues were $67 million below projections, a number expected to balloon to $1.2 billion in the next decade. That worries some lawmakers who say they're still waiting for a detailed long-term plan. Right now, though, I still fear that, that if we build it, they will come attitude exists, and we have to be very careful about that because ultimately the Utah taxpayer has to deal with it if there's a problem. Now, one of two things has to happen. Revenue has to go up or service has to be cut. We do know UTA recently cut some bus routes and a single ride tracks fare went up to 235 in April. It'll go up to 250 next spring. But low income advocates worry about raising fares across the board. They need to spend less on themselves and spend more on the, the low income rider, the people who are really the basis of the service that's been there all this time. 
UTA is looking at changing its fare structure so that in the future fares might be based on distance traveled. Besides that, it says it has no plans for a future fare increase or for a request for a tax increase to pay for future construction or operating costs. The Utah Transit Authority continues to refuse to provide details about retirement benefits for its former top executive, John English. KSL-TV and the Deseret News are appealing that decision, and this week, candidates for governor and county mayor also weighed in, telling political specialist John Daly that UTA should release those documents. UTA has denied our government records request regarding his retirement benefits. A UTA spokesman directed us to the agency's website, a section describing employee benefits, but so far the agency has refused to release specifics. Last spring, UTA CEO John English quietly retired from a post that paid him more than $300,000 a year, making him one of the nation's top paid transit executives. For weeks, KSL and the Deseret News have asked for details of his retirement package. UTA's response, no. I understand that uh, our uh, records and legal department has deemed that information to be private per their understanding of, of state law, statute, and precedent. UTA says according to its retirement plan, English is due 2% of his average salary the past five years, multiplied by his 35 years of service. That comes out to about $205,000 per year. But the agency wouldn't confirm that number, instead simply directing us to their website. UTA's multi-million dollar budget is funded largely by taxpayers of Salt Lake County. Utah's governor appoints a member to UTA's board. We asked both candidates for governor and county mayor their opinions. You know, I think uh, my salary as a public employee is, is open to the public. I think, uh, I think it should be available for all public eyes to see. They are a public entity and transparency is part of how we do business. Absolutely. Uh, they're a quasi-governmental organization. I think we need to know everything that we need to know to decide whether we trust the organization, whether they're spending our money well. Absolutely. I think everything should be transparent. Everything in my office will be transparent. You guys can walk in any time and ask me any question. I believe we ought to have openness and transparency as much as possible. I don't know what the personnel issues are there. If there's potential litigation or lawsuit, that's something the board should uh, uh, talk to you about. It's something I'm not privy to know. So far, UTA insists, even though English's retirement benefits are funded by the public, details shouldn't be available to the public. But in this case, uh, we believe that personal, pri personal retirement info is, is private information. Now an appeal by KSL TV and the Deseret News will go to UTA's Board of Trustees. If it's denied there, the next step is the State Records Board. In Salt Lake City, I'm John Daly, KSL 5 News. And through UTA, John English declined to comment on this story. New tonight, we looked into this question. Is a high profile elected official also a lobbyist for a high profile public agency? And did he disclose those lobbying relationships as the law so requires? Political specialist John Daly reports what was uncovered during a KSL Deseret News investigation. Since 2006, UTA spent $1.8 million on local lobbying, more than 650000 on its top lobbyist, r r Partners, spending UTA defends. We're always looking to hire the best people to help us in this work. The state of Utah has a website, utah.gov, where lobbyists are required to register every two years, disclosing clients they represent. Listed under r r Partners, four lobbyists, including Randy Horiuchi, longtime Democratic county councilman, who said this last year. And over the past 30 years, I've done some lobbying, and so when, when an opportunity presents itself, it seems to be good. I'll do it. County officials and employees are required to file signed and notarized disclosure statements disclosing private business interests. We asked for forms for county council members. The clerk's office tells us that it has no financial disclosure statement for Randy Horiuchi for the last decade. As elected officials, I, I don't think anyone does. Maybe if they do, I haven't seen them. I never have over 20 years. We spoke with other public figures about disclosure rules but didn't discuss details of this case. If a county officer is lobbying for someone, uh, that's a, a source of income that ought to be disclosed in a financial statement that the officer is required to file. The expectation of good government is to make sure that it is uh, free from conflict, it's free from influence, 
It's free from uh, personal gain. But whether I got any money for that, I, I mean, I didn't. I mean, I just was, have never been, in fact, I think the only time I ever really got money from ET was back in 90, before I became an elected official. He uh, helped us uh, with uh, a few of our clients, including at UTA at one time. Mike Zuhl uh, of UTA lobbyist r and Partners told us Horiuchi has had a relationship with the company for a decade, providing assistance, but was never an employee. So Randy was paid? Yes. How much? I, I, I don't feel I should disclose that. But he, he public had public money. No, 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 that it wasn't directly as a result of UTA. As I said, we had a number of clients. So you're saying that, that the, whatever lobbying work you've done has been unpaid for UTA? I would say pretty much. Pretty much? Okay. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, 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 right on. It has been unpaid. I mean, I've done, I mean, they, and the great thing is they wouldn't even have to pay me to do stuff I do for them. If you were to say I was a secret lobbyist for the UTA, um, maybe lobbyist is not the right word. I mean, it's really, I, I've helped them a lot, and I'm proud of it. I mean, I wouldn't do any sure. different. When we first asked, a spokesman admitted Horiuchi worked for UTA as a lobbyist. Well, he has a lot of connections. He's able to talk to a lot of people who trust him. It allows us to share information in a way that uh, wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to do. When we asked this week for more details, he emailed us that he didn't have enough information at the time and misspoke. He now says r, r Partners has multiple clients. Horiuchi serves certain clients, while Zool and others work for UTA. And he hasn't worked on a UTA issue since the Olympics. But this week, Horiuchi confirmed he has worked for two clients, UTA and IHC, in the last two years. He wouldn't say how much he was paid. I might pay the salary or even a retainer. It's basically as much as I'm used. UTA critic Roger Kerr says he knew nothing of Horiuchi's UTA lobbying link. It's, it's, this is an, 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 an outrage to the, to the citizens of, of Utah. We found nine examples where UTA-related business came before the county council, including a UTA board member reappointment, a real estate easement, a bus route, and West Jordan development plans, where Horiuchi voted for and sometimes spoke in favor of UTA's position. Earlier this month, the council discussed a controversial development next to a UTA frontrunner stop in Draper. Horiuchi said nothing about his UTA lobby tie, but after said... Well, what I'll probably do is, as I always do, whenever there's a UTA issue, I usually you'll either recuse, recuse myself or cast a silent vote. John Daly, KSL 5 News. John, thank you. At a council meeting last Friday, Horiuchi did in fact disclose that he had done work for UTA before voting to involve county tax dollars in a commercial project next to a front runner stop located in Draper. Now, Horiuchi is not the only Salt Lake County Council member who failed to file disclosure statements about private business interests. In fact, only three of nine council members filed the forms in 2012. The other six here did not.